What's up, Doc? It's a wabbit down here. It's hard to believe, but 75 years on, that wabbit is still going strong, despite Elmer Fudd's best efforts to see him off. And although it's called The Wild Hare, this episode was the first ever Bugs Bunny cartoon. He always gets the better of Elmer Fudd, so he's a kind of winner, really. And, and I suppose every good character that you like in animation, in the Toy Story movies of Kung Fu Panda, is a little bit of an underdog, but gets the best of everyone else. And that's what I think Bugs Bunny has taught the rest of animation. All right, dear. Yeah. Now, of course, Bugs is even longer in the tooth than he is in the ear. Yeah. And things have changed in animation since he was a baby bunny. Movies like Frozen can make serious money. Walt Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs was the first feature-length animation and cost around £1 million to make in 1937. A tiny amount compared to the most expensive cartoon ever, Tangled is thought to have cost a whopping £170 million. And the highest earning cartoon is Disney's Frozen. That's reportedly made a massive 800 million. Yeah, you were expecting maybe the Easter Bunny? But Bugs Bunny's always been about more than big bucks, although he did star in his own feature-length movie Space Jam in 1996. He's got his own star on Hollywood's Walk of Fame. I thought you'd never ask. He was the first character to feature on a US postage stamp, and he's still influencing animators today. Ollie Hyatt is from Blue Zoo, who also deal in cartoon rabbits. Personally, when we're coming up with show ideas, uh, his personality and his character and the slapstick nature of those cartoons to a, to a boy-owned studio, that's so inspiring, and we still put those things into everything we do today. You wouldn't catch Miffy kicking Elmer Fudd up the backside, though, because she just wouldn't be allowed to. And that's what makes Bugs Bunny so special. He gets away with stuff that other cartoon rabbits just couldn't. We've flip trot five years. That's all, folks. Not yet, Ruth, because just how influential is Bugs? And how much has animation changed over the years? With me now is Katie Steed, who's from the award-winning animators Slurpee Studios. And Katie, we invented animation here, no matter what the Americans think. <laughs> We did. Arthur Melbourne Cooper sort of invented animation, made the first animated film right in St Albans, which is actually where I live, in 1899. So you were meant to be involved Exactly. In it was but destined. Look, let's, let's be fair to them stateside. I mean, they sort of, if you like, improved the medium and made it what it is today. So just how influential is Bugs Bunny? Yeah, the Americans are, are pretty good at what they do. <laughs> uh, and Bugs Bunny is a, a huge character. He's influenced most of the animation industry today, but I think primarily as a sort of rebellion against Disney. You have this, if it wasn't for cartoon, early cartoons like the uh, Warner Brothers guys and Tom and Jerry, sort of rebelling against what Disney thought animation could be, yeah. I think animation would be a much smaller type thing, just entirely fixed by this one man's vision. So why was it the case for in a certain period? I, I remember when I was a kid, adults saying, you know, cartoons are for children and we're not interested. Why, why did that ever persist? Because it clearly didn't start out like that. Well, it, it, it did, really. Oh. Well, okay. Walt Disney is the guy that sort of came along and he was a very sentimental man. He was a guy who, and he was hugely, hugely successful in what he did. So everyone tried to copy that for a really long time. Even today, you know, you have things like South Park and Family Guy and, you know, documentary animation. And we make all this stuff and hundreds of adverts in animation, which we can use. To, we can sort of subvert that innocence a lot because people always still see it as a children's medium. But I've seen some stuff that would make your eyes pop out. Blow your mind. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, I, when, when Pixar first got in on the game, it made people's eyes pop out. It and did. Toy Story was their breakthrough long form animation. Let's have a quick look, remind ourselves of it. Boys, oh. there seems to be no sign of intelligent life anywhere. Hello. Oh, yeah. ah! For a showdown. My name is Woody. This is my spot. I guess the beauty of animations like this is they age incredibly well, don't they? The, the fashions don't really seem to matter. Yeah, we watch cartoons today. Kids today watch cartoons that were made in the 40s and the 50s. And you couldn't imagine live action TV, kids being willing to watch that stuff. But no, it just doesn't age if you do it right. But when you talk of age, there have been several ages, you were telling me before we came on air, of, mm -hmm. of, of um, animation, gold, silver, that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, going down to bronze. Well, we always call the golden age the sort of 40s, 50s, 60s. Disney died in 1967 and everyone kind of lost their way a bit. Disney had gone over all the competition and, um, and then when he died, Disney itself, the company, they just, you know, they made a, a series of 
kind of flops, Sword in the Stone, great film, but didn't mm. do very well. Black Cauldron did terribly. Never remember it. No. Yeah, and it wasn't until uh, sort of The Little Mermaid, which we call the second golden age. Where are we now? Because of the likes of Frozen third, and Inside yeah. Out and cinemas <laughs> at the moment, of course. So we're yeah. in the third golden age, you Yeah, say. and you've got DreamWorks as well doing really well to sort of... You know, and there's a, a lot of competition now for Disney. That's always been the problem when there hasn't been any competition for Disney. Having said all that, what is your favourite cartoon of all time? Uh, Jungle Book. Jungle Book. Jungle Book. Okay. Yeah. What about, well, because I was hoping you'd say Daffy Duck. <laughs> let's, have look, let's have a look at Daffy Duck all the same. All right. Enough is enough. This is the final, the, the very, very last straw. Who is responsible for this? I don't. Duck and Muck is classic because there we finish with Bugs Bunny animating Daffy. Thank you so much, Katie, for coming. And thanks for now. I say that because you've done some work for us. But Sean has the weather next. Layla is back with updates throughout the evening. I'll leave you with this. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye for now.